If you've been on my channel for the last couple of days, you've seen several videos regarding Carl Malone and Carl Malone and the controversy that has ensued since his appearance at the All-Star Game in Utah, where he was a judge for the slam dunk contest. Well, Kwame Brown reached out to Carl Malone's daughter, Cheryl Ford. She used to play in the WNBA. He asked her several questions about how she felt about what was going on with her father and what they did while they were at the All-Star Game. I'll go ahead and share that with you based on fair use, and then I'll follow up with my commentary. All right, now this uh, Chico phone, I don't want y'all thotting it up behind the scene now. Tell me to my face. What's up, what's up, Sheriff? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I told him why you sound like that. I told everybody you've been thotting it up out there in uh, Utah and Salt Lake City because it was all-star break. That was you not there doing? I was not thotting it up first off. I was out there with my family and my daughter, Kwame. So it was no thotting up nothing. I'm not a thot. I'm not assuming anything. I just was, you know, asking well, a question. That's not why my voice sounds like that. It's been a real it's been a long Last month, so. Oh, so what are some of the activities that you were doing out there with your pops? We, what activities we did? A whole bunch of legend autograph stuff, the legend brunch. Um, he had a family day with all his kids, all his grandkids. So we went tubing and stuff like that. So, yeah, we had a casino night to raise money for water for the kids over in uh in the Philippines. You know, we're trying to get running water over there to um, one of the villages. His wife's mom was Filipino, so her village was trying to get running water. That's all they would like, and that's what we had a casino night for. And um, we had a legends party for Charles Barkley lunching his um, vodka and stuff. So hey, Cheryl, somebody named the Independent say, hey, Cheryl, we miss you in Detroit. Detroit, basketball. Tell them, hey, actually, we'll be back uh, March the 8th through the 10th. They're actually honoring. Oh, so you going to be in Detroit for my birthday? So listen, I'm talking about the Chris Brown situation, and then you, and he, Chris Brown brought up an interesting point about the hypocrisy in the media of how he keeps getting bashed for the same thing over and over that he did as a 17 year old kid, even after him and Rihanna made a song together, ain't nobody's business. Even after they got back together, it's the fans and the people want to keep uh, bringing this up because they can get some clicks and views. But he showed that they don't do that to Mel Gibson and Sean Penn and all of these other white uh, actresses. Um, but then your father's name came up uh, on Twitter and all these things. And I was telling people how you guys have moved on from that. You and your brother have a better relationship with him. Can you kind of tell your feelings about the situation? I'm just like, like Chris Brown and Rihanna said, first off, it ain't nobody business. Like everybody has moved on. That son was actually with us in um, Utah this weekend. Uh, that was brought up and everything is just that everybody has moved on. That was 40 years ago. Nobody is perfect. Um, and we see on, on the thing all the time, people attacking us all the time. We got kids that are young now, and seven, eight, nine. One of his oldest, which was with us this weekend, is 12, almost 13. This stuff keeps coming up, keeps coming up. And, and we have kids, he has grandkids that's, that's old enough to understand and comprehend. Um, like we said, everybody has moved on. That was 40 years ago. He made a mistake. His son is not a mistake. He loved his son. But everybody has moved on. Leave past where it's at. People attack me all the time. I have got over 2,000 uh, friend requests on Instagram this past weekend. I guess because this mess has resurfaced again. And I'm just not going to accept anybody because why? Like, everybody moved on. If they want to continue to uh, get their nuts off, so to speak, about that part of the thing, let them. Because they attack me and say, keep your daughter away from him. He like, no, he does do not. I have, I do not worry about my daughter being around my dad. Nobody does. Everybody has moved on. Leave the past where it's at. Period. Mm -hmm. do, do you feel like they don't ever let black men specifically move on from the things they've done? No, ain't nobody harping on all the stuff the white men have done. It's a plea of celebrity white men out here that has made mistakes in their life too. But oh, we gonna talk about that for a few months and we'll move on but why every time dad is on like the big stage so to speak or being uh honor for something this this has to be resurfaced like mm -hmm. it was 40 years ago move on people right and and i understand that because you don't want your granddaughter you don't want all the grandkids to know him of that they want to be able to enjoy the good side of being the mailman you know the and good they parts are of enjoying the good side. they all love their papa too that we all, all his kids love it 
Love his uh, love him to death. Everybody has moved on. We had a great weekend in Utah, and we're gonna continue to have great family um, trips and times together, making memories, positive, good memories. Don't nobody want to keep here dwelling on what happened in the past. I that, mean, if, if that, we that, keep dwelling in the past, we everybody gonna be stuck in the past and be miserable. Life's too short for that. Yeah. He said uh, that they don't talk about Elvis in, in his past with underage girls. He's, he's known for being the king of rock, not for being with underage girls or, or anything like that. So I do think it's a difference, but... They always want to continue to tear the black men down. It's been that way for years. Well, and we're going to stick by him. We're going to support him. We're going to love him. And we don't give a damn what nobody will say or think. Mm -hmm. This is our life, lives, not y'all's. Like, y'all can keep being miserable. We're happy. We're very happy. Everybody's in a great space over here. Okay. When you sent me them pictures of you out there fishing with that fresh water and that fresh fish, I know you got doggone healthy eating stuff like that. Who? That fish that y'all was out there getting that fresh fish that time. Oh, we, yeah, we go to Alaska every year, and that's another one of our family things that we do every year. So we're okay. We're good over here. Y'all can continue to be miserable and play and talk and bully people from behind the internet. We're good. Everybody is good over here. Okay. It ain't your business. Just like Chris Brown and Rihanna said, but see, those type of celebrities have to be controlled by the people. And that's sad because to me, they really wanted to be together. Um, they didn't talk about Dana White when Dana White slapped his wife like three times in the face, slapped her to the ground and then picked her back up. Um, but they, they always bring up Chris Brown. Uh, they say when, when, when they saw that Dana White hit his wife, they said, well, his wife hit him first. And, and when Rihanna did that interview, Rihanna alluded to the fact that she may have hit Chris Brown first. And I'm, I'm still not giving him a pass to do what he did. But if you're going to give a pass to Dana White saying that uh, his wife hit him first, then what's, what's the difference? Recall. Let's be honest. That's what it seemed like. So, in my opinion, the color. So. Yep. Yeah. Jerry Jones, when they, they saw him on the steps, looking like he was helping, uh, like with, with an angry mob, stopping those black kids from getting into the school, Stephen A. came out and said, oh, Jerry Jones is my friend. He don't deserve to be talked about like that. <laughs> like, this is all they do. Yeah. But... So. Now, this is the second child that has come out in defense of their father and has stated that the son in question, born of the 13-year-old mother, was present with them down at the Utah Jazz All-Star Weekend. He's very much a part of their family. People were pointing out on Twitter that, oh, when he met his son at 17, he told him he couldn't do anything for him. They're stressing all this old stuff, but the son in question, Demetrius Bell, has moved forward. He has a relationship with his father and his other siblings. All the grandkids got together. So it seems the only people stuck on this are outsiders people that are not in the family so if the family has moved on i don't understand why the world is steady trying to give carl malone a punishment because in our eyes he didn't receive any type of punishment for his actions 40 years ago well the family of the 13 year old didn't see fit to um prosecute him at that time she's had all this time she could have got with gloria all red and they could have filed some kind of lawsuit against him and she could have gone that route but she has not done that so who are we to try to enact some punishment the man has lived his life in obscurity for the last 40 years and uh, we don't know what kind of turmoil he's experienced through that God is the one that gets vengeance and I'm sure he's dealt with some things in his lifetime or he will deal with some because of his actions. And now the sister is saying, you know, hell, her brother was there hanging out with them. He comes to the same things they have every year. Their family has obviously moved forward. He doesn't look at his father and say he's a rapist or you know what I'm saying? Even though many of us would look at that and see, see that situation is that. But if the son has gotten past it and that's his mother, we all know you love your mother and he has moved forward, then I don't understand the need to continue talking about it um, when he's honored for something. Let the man, oh, okay, he, he got this many points is the, you know, Utah Jazz, him and John Stockton were great together. They did this, they did that. All right, here's your award, go home. 
You know what I'm saying? Why can't it just be that instead of, oh, but you did this. You did that. And even now they try to sully MLK. They're trying to say he was with a white woman and all of that. But there's no proof of that. The white woman said something after the fact, after he was already deceased. So we don't know what the heck he did. But you got to try to muddy him up. You got to try to make it seem like he was doing something cheating on his wife and all that you know it's always something when it comes to black men they want them to not be appealing for whatever reason they want black men not to look like the kings that they are or to look like they are the standard of men we have to look at other people as the standard but that's just my thoughts on it Let me know what you think in the comment section. Make sure you hit the like button before you go and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, peace.